Polygon has just released another proposal as part of the Polygon 2.0 roadmap. This particular announcement is in regards to the token that is native to the Polygon POS chain, which is currently Matic. And the proposal is essentially to add more utility and overall upgrade the Matic token. And as part of that upgrade, the name will be changing from Matic to Pol. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I don't know if it's Pol, Pol, or Pol, however you want to say it, it's P-O-L instead of Matic now. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through what exactly is the proposal, why it's happening, and how it fits in with the broader vision that is this Polygon 2.0 upgrade. For those of you who are kind of out of the loop on this whole Polygon 2.0 situation, essentially what it is, is a series of announcements here. You can see the first one was in regards to the Polygon POS upgrading to a Polygon ZK EVM Validium. I do have another video on that, it will be linked in the description. The second one was to kind of give a brief overview of what the future of Polygon 2.0 architecture texture looks like. So it was an announcement of how the kind of chains that Polygon has come out with, with the Polygon POS chain, Polygon ZK EVM, and the other products such as Polygon Maiden and Polygon Supernets are going to fit in together with the Polygon token. And that brings us to yesterday's announcement, which was the proposal to upgrade the Matic token. And as part of that upgrade, rename the token from Matic to Pol. And here is the tweet announcement from Polygon. So you can see here, we're excited to propose the Polygon 2.0 architecture designed to provide unlimited scalability, unified liquidity, thus transforming Polygon into the value layer of the internet. And this value layer of the internet is the overall vision of Polygon 2.0 and the outcome that the kind of Polygon 2.0 roadmap is leading up to. What the proposal is, is to upgrade the Matic token to be renamed to Pol, and I'm just gonna call it Pol moving forward, to become a hyper productive token. To understand what that means, you kind of need some contextual background information. So Bitcoin, is what is known as an unproductive token, right? You can't participate in the network as a holder of Bitcoin. There's no real incentive mechanism for actually becoming a participant in the Bitcoin network. Then Ethereum came along and that is called the native token, sorry, to Ethereum Ether is what's known as a productive token. Productive token refers to the fact that you can participate in the network and be rewarded for being a valid participant in the network, right? And actually making it a blockchain. As a participant in Ethereum, you, after the merge or as they move to a proof of stake consensus mechanism, you now need to stake upfront 32 ETH to actually be a participating validator in the Ethereum network. The way that this works is essentially if you act as a good validator and do the right thing, you then get rewarded with more ETH. And if you do the wrong thing or you don't act when you're called upon, you have your ETH slashed which essentially just means you lose some ETH for being a bad actor in that kind of network or as a participant in that network. So that is why it's called a productive token rather than Bitcoin's unproductive token, where there's no real incentive mechanism for you to become a participant in the network. So when Polygon was created as a sidechain, which is technically a commit chain since it does post transaction data back to Ethereum, it is also currently a productive token. Right. When you think about it, Polygon is very similar to the way that the Ethereum ecosystem works. Ether is the productive token for Ethereum and Matic is currently the productive token for Polygon as that sidechain or commit chain. Since Polygon came out with their original Polygon POS chain, which is probably the most popular or well-known chain that Polygon has right now, it has come out with a number of new products and innovations, specifically in the zero knowledge space. In particular, we're talking about the Polygon ZK EVM role up that has come out earlier this year in a mainnet environment. We recently saw Polygon propose to upgrade their Polygon POS to a ZK EVM Validium. And I have videos on both of these topics linked in the description if you want to find out more about this. And then more recently, we saw as part of the Polygon 2.0 roadmap, a kind of release or announcement about what the architecture of the Polygon 2.0 state was going to be. And then yesterday, we saw the Polygon tokenomics announcement. So with all of these innovations and even new chains, as well as as the products that Polygon is currently working on, like Polygon Supernets and Polygon Maiden, there's only really a purpose for the Matic token currently to serve the Polygon POS chain. So in a nutshell, Polygon currently has a token that serves one of their many chains. So it kind of becomes an obvious decision in this proposal to say, hey, we've got all of these new products and innovations that we're working on. Why don't we sort of upgrade the Matic token to serve 
all of these new chains that we've come out with. So after a productive token, that leads us to what Polygon has come out with to say, we're going to upgrade Matic from a productive token for the Polygon POS sidechain alone to become what is called a hyper productive token, which means holders of this token can participate in multiple chains. So for example, Polygon ZKVM and Polygon POS, as well as have multiple different roles in the network rather than just being a validator as it is currently. So in this new framework or the hyper productive token as a validator, you can kind of choose to subscribe to which Polygon chains you're going to validate with that poll token. And validate can mean a number of different things in this new state. With all of these new ZK tech innovations coming out, validation could mean more than just one thing or proposing or accepting transactions, right? There's new kind of operations that need to be decentralized in this network, such as the generation of ZK proofs and the participation in data availability committees. This goes along with also just being able to be a validator where you're accepting transactions and generating blocks for any of the chosen networks that you've chose to subscribe to. Now, in terms of how this looks from a kind of practical perspective, as a user, it's a pretty simple upgrade process. There will be a smart contract that you submit your Matic to. Every Matic that you submit to that smart contract, you're going to get the equivalent amount of poll in return. And in the kind of announcement blog post, it says there'll probably be a really large grace period of around four years for you to actually perform this process so that people who own Matic have a long time to kind of transform that into the poll token. And as you dig deeper into the white paper that is listed in the blog post, I will also link this in the description. You can see there is a section called emission here. And I'm just gonna read this out. Poll is emitted at a predefined deterministic rate for two purposes. First purpose is this validator rewards. So basically to incentivize validator onboarding and retention, poll should be continuously emitted at a predetermined rate and distributed to validators as the base protocol reward, proposing a yearly emission rate of 1% of the poll supply for this purpose. The emission rate would not be possible to change for the initial 10 years. And after that period, the community can decide to decrease it in an arbitrary way via the governance framework. And they kind of talk about how the token will be used for governance a little bit more in this white paper. Again, it will be linked in the description. The second emission here is listed as ecosystem support. So to provide ongoing support for further development and growth of the Polygon ecosystem, we propose to introduce the community treasury, which is a community governed ecosystem fund described again in another section of the white paper. And this is also a 1% emission rate of the poll supply for this purpose. Later on, you can kind of see the justification for these emission rates for sufficient ecosystem support, as well as security via scarcity. You can read more details or just pause the video if you prefer to see exactly what I'm highlighting here. I will let you, if you're interested, read the full white paper and the blog post linked in the description below. Overall, the Polygon 2.0 vision is to kind of enhance all of the products that Polygon has with ZK technology. So that is including the ZK EVM roll-up release, as well as a proposal to upgrade the POS to a ZK EVM of Validium. If you're interested in learning more about either of those topics, there'll be two videos linked in the description below, we can learn about the Validium proposal as well as what the ZK EVM is. The token is kind of an obvious decision to say, hey, we're only serving one of many of our products right now with this token. Let's upgrade it to have more utility in our overall ecosystem. And the kind of big part of that is renaming the token from Matic to Pol, as they have already done this kind of rebranding from Matic to Polygon in the past. This is just kind of keeping the token up to speed with that rebranding. So hopefully, that clarifies any questions that you had about the Polygon 2.0 roadmap, as well as the most recent announcement in the token being renamed from Matic to Pol and what the utility upgrades that come with that token upgrade are. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed this kind of content and subscribe to the channel for more Web3 updates and content like this. Appreciate you watching this far and I'll see you in the next one.